And now to cap off the B trilogy, <laughs> the new Worker B2 from Neat Microphones. I just got it. Let's open her up, see how it looks, see how it sounds. News from the booth! Hey everybody, welcome back to the VoiceOver Village. I'm Rick McIver, your test pilot for today. On the docket, the brand new Worker B2. Just came today, hours ago. I have yet to open it up. I thought we would do it together. But before I get into that, I wanted to talk about this really quick. <laughs> You'll notice I have the Bumblebee, which is last week's microphone that we reviewed, hooked up to my boom arm because I made a huge mistake and forgot to edit in the clip of me putting it on the boom arm uh, in that video for some reason. I don't know I, what I was thinking. While we open this microphone, I'm going to be using the Bumblebee to record the audio while we open this guy. The Bumblebee mounts to the boom arm very easily. Here's some B-roll to show you just how easily it is. You screw the bottom off, and then you screw this thing onto the standard mount that's on pretty much every mic stand. One thing I will say about this, and I, if you haven't seen my review of the Bumblebee, I'll put a link to it up here, or maybe it's on this side. It's one of these sides. I can't remember. They only let you do one. One of these sides. I want to reiterate something I said last week, and that is that the Bumblebee design with the top grill like this really makes you want to talk into the microphone like this. This is incorrect. This is not how you're supposed to talk into the microphone. However, doesn't this look right? Doesn't this kind of feel right? Because it looks like a handheld dynamic mic on the top. Design mistake. Let's get into opening the Worker Bee 2. It is packaged very similar to the other Worker Bees, and so I know that if I try to open one end, I won't get it out. I have to open both ends and push it out of the sleeve because they're so snug. Ooh, come on. Very satisfying pop. Open her up, just like the other two microphones, a packet of info, styrofoam, boo, and the little worker bee. Isn't that adorable? It is absolutely adorable, packaged all in there. But what I do notice, there's no shock mount. Like the king bee has the big old shock mount. This does not. Do not eat. Here it is. <laughs> it is really adorable, actually. A little mounting, a hard mounting clip that comes with it. That's what's in the box. This is tiny. It feels solid, very well built. Let's see if this one smells. Oh, it does. There is some manufacturing process where they paint these and then wrap them right away. It smells like spray paint. It really, it smells like spray paint. Now the, the smell fades. This one doesn't smell anymore. The King Bee, which I have right here, doesn't smell anymore. No. And so for reference, King Bee, Worker Bee, Bumblebee, Bee. I do know from reading about this that this is a medium diaphragm condenser microphone with a standard cardioid pattern, which means that when you talk into it, which we'll do here in a minute, uh, you have a little more freedom left to right off axis than you do a hypercardioid kind of or ultra high cardioid pattern, super duper thin pattern. The box says that this has an internal shock mount, but I have yet to meet an internal shock mount that I actually like. Most of them are crap. Let's compare it here side by side to the King Bee. This is very heavy and very big, comes with a giant shock mount. Tiny and happy. The King Bee has this little pop filter that is removable. Worker Bee does not. Something to keep in mind if you happen to be a plosive speaker. It's really quite oddly shaped, so good luck finding a uh, third-party shock mount to put it in. I wouldn't be surprised if we see a shock mount for this come out in the not-too-distant future. Let's hook it up and listen to it. See how it sounds. Okay, I'd like to take this moment to remind you that for this portion of the video, put on dim headphones. It makes a huge difference. All right, so here we are, hooked up to the old boom arm. Um, it's a small form factor. It looks pretty cute on here, actually. I really like the way it looks, as opposed to the original B series. The Worker B was just a miniature version of the King B, which had these yellow stripes on it, like that right there. I would be so distracting for me, I, I, I just couldn't take it. But this, this looks okay. How does it sound? That's the most important part, right? Well, all these companies are redesigning their microphones 
to look good on camera. There's a reason for that. So it is a hard mount. It says it has an internal shock mount, like I said before. However, those are never good. Tapping on the desk. So a condenser microphone in this environment isn't too bad, but kind of, sort of, with some caveats. Normally, in this space, I use a dynamic microphone. And let me tell you why. This room is my control room. It's well treated, but it's not isolated, which means that you can hear like the humming of the computer fan or uh, if the dog barks upstairs or if the neighbor mows the lawn. It's not isolated. Now, there's no reverberation because I have sound panels everywhere that cuts down and so it's treated. But a condenser microphone like this is going to pick up a lot of the extra noise in the room. You can hear, if you listen closely, you can hear the fan running on the computer. You might be able to hear someone talking upstairs because there is someone talking upstairs. That's just part and parcel of a condenser microphone. Later, we'll go in the booth and we'll see how it sounds in an isolated room as well. This is pointed at the corner of my mouth about, I don't know, about a hand's width off, about three inches or so off the microphone, which is good mic technique, what you normally do. So if you say pizza is perfect with pineapple on top, in this technique, you don't get a lot of plosives. But when I was hooking this up and I spoke into it, I noticed that it is super sensitive to direct plosives. So you have to have really good mic technique with this microphone. Let me show you. I'll just angle myself into the microphone. Pizza is perfect with pineapple on top. Oh my God, I feel like I broke it. That's insane. Blah. Now this hard mount here, you can kind of unscrew the bottom a little bit. It's really loud. So that you can rotate it and get it get it where you want it. And then you screw this back on and tighten it and it'll, it'll stay positioned where you want it. Talking directly into the front of the microphone. Let's rotate it 90 degrees. Here's 90 degrees off axis for this microphone and 180. Oh boy. Wow. That sounds really crazy. <laughs> 180 degrees off axis. Back to 90 and right in the front. There you go. I mean, it's a sensitive mic. It feels like a hot mic. You can hear a lot of hum in the background. Hmm. And you can, you can also hear someone talking upstairs. Eek. So when you get close to a microphone, it gets a lot more resonant, deeper. When I'm about this far away, which is about a hand, a fist length, is about three to four inches away, um, that's where I normally would talk. If I needed to do something that had more resonance to it, I would get closer to the mic. So let's see how this sounds for proximity. However, remember, plosives are a problem, so I'm going to rotate this a little bit. So it's more, definitely more crosstalk. All right, now here's the proximity effect for this microphone. Actually, it's not bad. One of the things you want to be careful of with proximity is, number one, if it's a super sensitive diaphragm, which this is, and you, even though I'm talking across, you can still hear the plosives. Uh, the other thing that you want to be careful of is when you get close, if it sounds too muddy, if it, use, if it loses a lot of articulation, that's bad for proximity. I can still hear some mid and high. I'll have to go back and listen to this later. However, right now, monitoring it, I can still hear a good fair amount of mids and highs. It's not getting too muddy. Let's see how it sounds when I'm farther away from the mic. I don't like this back here. I don't like this at all. The other mic that it could go up against, which I think is a medium diaphragm microphone, is the AT2020. A lot of voice actors love the AT2020. They buy it. It's a $99 microphone. This is a $99 microphone. It's probably meant to compete directly with the AT2020. I don't have an AT2020 right now. Maybe in the future. I just never needed one. Let's hear how it sounds in the booth. Headphones. The Worker Bee is now attached to my Rode PSA 1 Plus boom arm. The new one. I think it's quieter. What about the table? Not bad. I was really kind of stuck here. What do I compare this mic against? I really didn't think it was fair to put it up against my KSM32. It's, I mean, nowhere near the same cost. It's a different diaphragm. I mean, there's just too many things that are different about them. And I don't have another XLR microphone 
That's a medium diaphragm condenser that has a cardioid pattern. I just don't have another one of these. With all the microphones I have, you would think I would. I was a little stuck until I thought of this. <laughs> this is the King Bee 2 and the Worker Bee 2 side by side, head to head. Let's see how they sound compared to each other. Now I'm gonna remind you, when I put a title on the screen down here, this will be the Worker Bee, and then this audio over here, this will be the King Bee. So I have both of these mics equally set for the gain. Uh, they're about 40 dB right now. But I do notice that the King Bee is hotter. Now it makes sense, it's a large diaphragm condenser microphone, it's gonna be a little bit more sensitive. However, I'm doing my best to not speak very loud <laughs> so you can get an idea for what they sound like tonally at the same gain level. Now one thing I did do for this comparison that I didn't do in my review video for the King Bee, I took off the little pop filter. I was actually afraid to do this. I tried to take it off a couple of times and I felt like I was gonna break it because the way the head works here, right? It's got this big body and then this tiny little neck and then this where the, where the diaphragm is. And I felt like I was gonna snap the neck and I didn't wanna do that. But I got a little brave. I read the instructions three or four times just to make sure I was doing it right. And eventually it came off. And what I found was interesting. This, which goes on the King Bee, also fits on the Worker Bee. So now the King Bee comes with the shock mount and the King Bee comes with this little pop filter. The Worker Bee does not. Soon, I bet you're gonna see this little pop filter for sale separately. And you'll probably see the shock mount for sale separately as well. Hmm. So here's the proximity on the King Bee. I'm not talking loud because I know it is a hot, hot mic. I'm looking at the waveform now. This is a freaking hot mic. And here's the proximity of the Worker Bee. Not quite as hot of a mic. Also, not quite as sharp as a high end. Definitely more bite in the proximity of the King Bee than the Worker Bee. This is definitely smoother than this one over here. <laughs> it's still hot than this one over here. Oh boy. So now I'm gonna take this Worker Bee, I'm gonna put it in my workflow for a few days and see how I like it. And then I'll come back with my final thoughts. My final thoughts and recommendations. I have notes. Let me read them. <laughs> Do I recommend the Worker B2? Yes. But... So here's the thing. This is a condenser mic that has a cardioid pattern, which means it's very, very sensitive to everything in the room. Even my clothes rustling here, I'm sure it's picking up. If you have an isolated space that is fairly sound resistant, I hate to use the word soundproof because it's not really a thing, then yes, this will work just fine for you. However, if you have like a um, you know, PVC pipe booth or you're in a closet, then you can hear the rest of the house behind you. Even though your space is treated and doesn't reverberate, if it's not isolated, you're going to be fighting this microphone a lot. So that being said, is it worth it? Does it sound good? I think it sounds pretty good. The only thing is that it's so sensitive to plosives. And so I ended up using the pop filter from the King Bee, put it on here and tried it. I did Zoom calls. I did some auditions with this thing. I actually didn't do any jobs with it. I wasn't that confident in it. However, some auditions with it. I like the way it sounded. I put it through my normal processing, which is what I'm doing right now. For 99 bucks, it's a pretty good sounding mic. However, if you're able to step up a little bit more to $169, you can get the King Bee, and that does come with the pop filter, and it does come with the shock mount. It's a little bit hotter, and it does have a little bit more high-end articulation. So for 70 bucks more, you might consider jumping up to the King Bee. Tonally, this mic is warmer than the King Bee. I didn't have, like I said, an AT2020 to compare it against, but tonally, this is a little bit darker. It's not dark. I wouldn't call it a dark mic. It has plenty of high-end and mid-range articulation, even when you're doing close voicing. But it is just slightly warmer, just slightly darker over the King Bee. So take that into consideration as well. If you have a heavy sibilant sound when you're speaking, um, this might help you a little bit. 
I can't use this in my control room. I can't use it for Zoom calls in there. I can't use it for anything outside this booth. It's just too sensitive with that open cardioid pattern and being a condenser mic and as hot as it is. But look at it. I mean, come on. It's adorable. <laughs> If you want to see the other videos that I did on the B series, the Bumblebee and the King Bee, here are the videos right up here. I hope this has been helpful. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time.